dear students welcome to the lecture number 10 so today in this talk i shall prove the tj extension theorem so here is the statement so it says so let x be a normal topological space and let a be a closed subspace of x then this theorem actually says any continuous map so any continuous map say f from a to minus 1 to 1 may be extended to a continuous map g from x to minus 1 1 that's mean you have a continuous map this continuous function from a to closed interval minus 1 and 1 and this theorem says if x is normal and a is the closed subspace of x then that function f can be extended to a continuous function g from the whole space x to minus 1 comma 1 that is the codomain is the same but we can extend the domain now what do you mean by extended that's mean g restricted over a is actually the function f so in other words that is g if we take the restriction on a this is just the function f okay now to prove this theorem first of all we need that euration lemma so what is the statement of the euration lemma so we can take a different color so recall that So let x be a normal space that is normal topological space and a and b be two closed subsets of x then the euration lemma says lemma says there exists a continuous function say say just if from x to you can say 0 1 such that f of a is just that one in point that is singleton 0 and f of b is the other in point that is singleton 1 now tell me is there any specialization for that closed interval 0 1 so there is no specialization on the set that is right 0 1 now since that 0 1 is actually that space is homeomorphic to any closed interval a b right so we can replace that 0 1 by the closed interval a b that's mean we can say there exists a continuous function say some 
g say x to any a b such that f of a is that singleton a and f of b is singleton b right so we can choose any a b so we can choose any a less than b in r right oh sorry here it should be g right fine now this is just the evolution lemma now we shall use this lemma okay now first of all so to prove the this theorem that is that tj extension theorem so is what is this theorem this theorem says if you have a continuous function f from a to closed interval minus 1 to 1 then it can be extended to a continuous map g x to minus 1 comma 1 right now we shall prove this theorem by using several steps now in the first step we shall first consider one continuous function a different continuous function say capital a from a to minus r comma r so this is my step one so we shall use this step again and again okay so step one so let say some capital F A to minus R comma R B A continuous function. Okay, and what is my A and X? So this A and X is given. So here. x is a normal space and a is a closed subset of x so why such a map exists so we just assume that if you have a function capital F from A to minus R comma R then you get a G okay now let you have a function F from A to minus R comma R then we claim that then we claim that so there exists another continuous function Right? So, if you have a continuous function from A to minus R comma R, then you have a continuous function G, we can write it is a capital G from the whole space X to and my codomain will be minus R by 3 comma R by 3. Okay. Continuous function this such that that g of a minus f of a that is their difference the difference between g of a and my that f of a their modulus value is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r and it is true for all a belongs to what x no because f is not defined on x right f is defined on a right so we said that difference is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r for all a belongs to a right okay now we will prove this one we will prove this one 
Now how to prove this? So first of all, see, we have a codomain, right? My codomain is minus r comma r. So this is my minus, this is my minus r comma r, right? Now what we are planning? We are planning to restrict the codomain, right? Not restrict, but we are we are planning to find another function g whose codomain is minus r by 3 comma r by 3 right so you can see that this the length of this codomain is just the one third of the length of that right so that is this that is the reason so we shall first divide this interval that is minus r comma r into three equal parts so it is minus r to say it is minus r by 3 say it does not look like uh, 3 right so this this okay say this is my minus r by 3 say this is r by 3 and this is r right now say this is my i1 say this is my i2 and say this is my i3 okay okay now write mathematically So we first divide the interval minus r comma r into three equal parts. So say i1 equal to say minus r comma minus r by 3 okay say i2 equal to minus r by 3 comma r by 3 and i3 equal to r by 3 comma r okay fine now just look at g here my codomain is from x to minus r by 3 comma r by 3 right that's mean we shall define g from x to the i2 right x to the interval i2 so that's mean we need i2 but we don't need i1 and i3 right now we do something with that i1 and i3 so what i shall do so now let b equal to my f inverse i1 and c equal to f inverse i3 now what can you say about b and c look at so what is my f so f is a function i can take a different color okay so f is a function from a to minus r comma r right and we define this r comma r into three portion one two three right now we have taken this portion and take the inverse image we have taken this portion and the inverse image so inverse image of this portion is b and inverse image of this portion is c right so that's mean b and c are closed set in a right obviously they are closed sets in a right okay now they are closed sets in a so what does it mean but we know that a is also closed that's mean b and c are also closed in x fine now since i1 i3 are closed in the domain say minus r comma r and if is continuous that imply b and c are closed sets in a right now also it is given that a is closed in x since a is closed in x 
that imply B and C are also closed in X. Fine. Now also, can you see that B and C are disjoint? This is also simple, right? Because B, the image of B is I1 and image of C is I3. They are disjoint, right? Also, A so V and C are disjoint. Right? Okay. Now B and C are closed sets in X and they are disjoint. So what we can do? Now we can just use that is, we can just find an euration lemma, right? We can use that in euration lemma. Now, if we use the euration lemma, look at that euration lemma. So, this is my euration lemma. So, what A and B we shall choose for my G? Obviously, my required codomain is minus R by 3 and R by 3, right? So, that means my A should be minus R by 3 and my B, that is small b, should be R by 3. That is the simple, right? Sorry. So therefore, so thus by evolution lemma, there exists a continuous function g from g from x to we can choose any a b right so we will choose the a b is minus r by 3 comma r by 3 why because we need that such that g of v is minus r by 3 that singleton and g of c is r by 3 right so we got that required g right now just only point is to check that which point so we need to just check that that g a minus f a less than equal to 2 by 3 r so we need to just check that right so this property is done we need to check only this fine now claim that so f of a minus g of a is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r for all A belongs to A. Now why that is true? Okay. Now this is actually a simple one. Why? Because so if A belongs to A, that means we have three possibilities, right? So for any A belongs to A, we have three possibilities. possibilities so either a belongs to b or a belongs to c or a belongs to a minus b union c right now what if if a belongs to b now if a belongs to b 
then f of a so what is my f of a so f of a belongs to so what is my b b is f inverse see look at what is my b b is f inverse i1 right so if a belongs to b then f of a belongs to i1 right so this belongs to minus r comma minus r by 3 and g of a is equal to minus r by 3 right so that imply mod of f of a minus g of a is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r right clear this is if no then also we can do this one so okay i can do precisely so it is here minus r less than f of a less than equal to minus r by 3 right now since g a equal to minus r by 3 that imply minus r plus r by 3 less than equal to f of a minus g of a now less than equal to so minus r by 3 plus r by 3 now that imply minus 2r by 3 less than equal to f of a minus g of a less than equal to 0, right? So their modulus is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r. Fine. Now similarly, if a belongs to c, then f of a belongs to r by 3 comma r right that is i3 and g of a equal to r by 3 so what is my the difference f a minus g a now similarly we can prove that mod of f of a minus g of a is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r now what if if my a belongs to that a minus b union c so that imply f of a belongs to i2 belongs to that is equal to minus r by 3 comma r by 3 right and this is the same as c c g as well right so that imply so f of a comma g of a belongs to that interval minus r by 3 comma r by 3 right so their difference will be the diameter of this set that is the length of this set so that imply mod of f of a minus g of a less than equal to 2 by 3 into r so we are done so step 1 is done now during the proof we shall use this step again and again that means we shall change that r and we will get a g just remember that for each r and for a f we are getting a g with this property right now during this proof we shall use this r that is we shall change my r and we shall change my f and we will get a new g okay fine now here is my step 2 okay now what is my given condition first of all so now again go to the main statement of this theorem see what is my statement my statement is it is given that f is a small f is a continuous function from a to minus 1 comma 1 right that's mean we can use my step one right what is my step one in step one we have a function 
capital A from A to minus R comma R, right? So if I want to use step one, so what R we need to choose? Obviously, R equal to one, right? Now given, step 2 is given, f a to minus 1 comma 1, a continuous function, right? Now by using step 1, So, taking R equal to 1 and by using that step 1, we get a G, right? But here, we can rename that G because it depends, it is a particular, right? So, we get a continuous function. Say it is my g1 from x to where? x to see what is my the codomain of capital G. So my codomain of capital G was see minus r by 3 comma r by 3 right. So we get a g1 from x to minus 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 and mod of f of a minus g1 of a that is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r where r my 1 right r is 1 so it is just 2 by 3 for all a belongs to a fine Okay, now here you can just say that mod of g1x is less than equal to also what 2 by no it is what will be the modulus of gx it is from minus 1 by 3 to plus 1 by 3 right so their modulus value is 1 by 3 fine for all x belongs to x. Anyway, so we have a function f minus g1, right? That is less than equal to 2 by 3. Now we shall repeat the argument again and again. Okay, so now we have a continuous function. f minus g1 that is my continuous function from a to minus 2 by 3 comma 2 by 3 here my r equal to 2 by 3 right so therefore by taking r equal to 2 by 3 and using step 1 we get a continuous function g2 from x to where so x2 we know it is minus r by 3 comma plus r by 3 right so here my r is 2 by 3 so it will be minus 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 comma 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 right and mod of f a minus g a g1 a so that was my previous function and minus g2 of a 
Now that is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r. So 2 by 3 into r. So what is my r? r is 2 by 3. So that is 2 by 3 whole square. Right? Now here g2x is less than equal to 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 for all x belongs to x okay now so similarly we can find g3 g4 g5 right but this is not a mathematical way to proceed now we shall use the mathematical induction for the existence of gn for all n okay so first of all let s n be a statement so let s n be a statement that g n a function exist so g n so we can write a statement a continuous function function g n exists such that So we have these two properties, so gnx is less than equal to 1 by third into 2 by 3 into n minus 1 for all x belongs to x and mod of f of a minus g1a minus up to gna is less than equal to 2 by 3 whole to the power n for all a belongs to a okay now just recall that by our construction s n is true for n equal to 1 and 2 right now we have seen that s n is true for n equal to 1 and 2 right now assume that s n is true for n equal to k that is g k x less than equal to 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 power k minus 1 for all x belongs to x and f of a minus g1 a minus up to g k a that is less than equal to 2 by 3 power k for all a belongs to a right now we claim that sn is true for n equal to k plus 1 as well so therefore so this is a function so that my f minus g1 up to gk is a function from a to so minus 2 by 3 this is power k comma 2 by 3 power k so this is a continuous function right so therefore by step 1 so by taking r equal to 2 by 3 power k and by using step 1 we get a continuous function g2 g k plus 1 
get a continuous function g k plus 1 right from x to where my 1 by 3 into r right so 2 by 3 power k comma 1 by 3 com into 2 by 3 power k this is my continuous function and that is f of a minus g1 a so minus g k a minus g k plus 1 a that is less than equal to 2 by 3 into r so 2 by 3 into r so this is my r so that is 2 by 3 into k plus 1 right so for all a belongs to a and here so g k plus 1 x that modulus is less than equal to 1 by third into 2 by 3 power k for all x belongs to x right so therefore the statement sn is true for n equal to k plus 1 thus by the principle of mathematical induction principle of mathematical induction we can say so sn is true for all n belongs to natural number that's mean g1 g2 g3 all exist so that imply g1 g2 g3 all exist okay now we define see we need to define a extension right now we define we define a function g from x to so we don't know which is the domain so we just write here just r so we have to write we have to see what is my co domain okay so here we can write just r such a way that g of x equal to summation of n equal to 1 to infinity g n x okay now just check what is the domain of g that imply mod of g x is less than equal to summation of n equal to 1 to infinity mod of g n x right now what is my g n x so we know that you can see g n x is less than equal to 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 power n minus 1 so that imply it is less than equal to so it is 1 by 3 summation n equal to 1 by 1 to infinity so 2 by 3 n minus 1 right so it is just 1 by 3 into 1 plus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 square this geometric series right so what is the sum of the geometric series it is 1 by n into it is 1 by 1 minus r right here r is 2 by 3 so this is just 1 so that imply mod of g of x is less than or equal to 1 for all x belongs to x right so we can say g right is a function from x to where minus 1 comma 1 now this part is done fine now we need to show that g is continuous so first of all we need to show that g is continuous
okay so how to prove that g is continuous now again let so say t n equal to g1 plus g2 plus up to g n be the partial sum of the series of function summation n equal to 1 to infinity g and x right now obviously each of tn is continuous right now since each tn sorry each gn is continuous therefore tn is continuous right now for any k bigger than n we have so what is my tkx minus tnx okay so this is just mod of summation over say i equal to n plus 1 to k g of i x right but we know each of g i x is less than equal to 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 power i minus 1 now that is less than equal to we can just write 1 by 3 summation i equal to n plus 1 to k it is 2 by 3 power i minus 1 now if we take that 2 to the power i minus 1 outside that is the first term is 2 to the power 2 by 3 power n right now if we take that outside then we will get it is 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 power n and then that summation will be or you can just write then that this term will be 1 plus 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 whole square in this way right so up to Two by three power k minus one n minus k plus one right so sorry k minus n minus one or something like that i have to check that that term anyway so that is less than you can write one by three into two by three power n and we take that infinite series so one plus two by three plus two by three square plus zero dot, dot this one right now what is that sum so equal to 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 power n and this sum again 1 minus 2 by 3 so this is equal to 2 by 3 power n so that imply actually we get mod of t k x minus tn x less than 2 by 3 power n right so for all x belongs to x where that k is bigger than n right now since that right term does not depend on k right it does not depend on k So, taking k tending to infinity, we have that is g of x minus tn of x 
is less than 2 by 3 power n for all x belongs to x right now here obviously now for any epsilon obviously then for any given epsilon bigger than 0 there exists capital N such that mod of gx minus tnx less than epsilon or we can write it is here for all n bigger equal to that natural number n and also this is true for all x and further same n will work for all x in x right so that imply that tn that sequence of function converges to g uniformly so uniformly since tn converges to g uniformly and each of tn is continuous so g is continuous now since each of tn is continuous so g is continuous right so therefore we get a continuous function so therefore we get a continuous function g from x to minus 1 comma 1 right now we just need to check that g a equal to f a now we need to check that g of a equal to f of a for all a belongs to a now this is also true why also by our construction so by our construction so for any a belongs to a we have f of a minus g1 a minus g2 a minus g n a is less than equal to 2 by 3 into n right so that imply mod of f of a minus this is my t n of a less than equal to 2 by 3 n so that imply t n a converges to f of a right for each a now since tn a that is converges to g of a or we know this is true for all x right so tn of x converges to g of x for all x belongs to x so we have g of a equal to f of a for all a belongs to a we can write here for each a belongs to a right so we get a continuous function g from x to minus 1 comma 1 such that g a equal to f a for all a in a so that imply g is a continuous extension of f 
fine now so this completes the proof okay now there is one note for this one for this theorem so is there any speciality of the closed interval minus one comma one exactly no because so here i can note I can take a note that now since that open closed interval minus comma one is homeomorphic to any closed interval a v for any a less than b in R, right? So therefore, we can generalize that statement a little bit. We can say. we can say for any normal space x and for any closed set a in x any continuous function a from a to just take closed interval a b in r may be extended to a continuous function g from x to a b so what is the proof of this one so if there is a statement like this way only so we first take a homeomorphism from a b to minus 1 comma 1 right now take the function that is the revised function from a to minus 1 comma 1 and we proved that is a extension theorem as previously and then again we push back the main function by composing the reverse of the homeomorphism right okay now there is another version of the tj extension theorem it says so it is another version actually it says any continuous map so first of all again so let x be a normal topological space and a be a closed set in x then any continuous function f from a to r so here i am not writing closed interval minus 1 comma 1 so here i am writing r right so any continuous function from a to r again may be extended to a continuous function g from x to r so that's mean even if you choose the codomain as r that is not only that closed interval a b and not the minus one comma one so if you assume the codomain is r then also you can get a continuous extension from g x to r so the proof is little bit tricky tricky means just one trick so we have to apply the previous version and there is a trick so what is that trick so here is the proof.
okay so first of all so given all of this right so let so we know that r is homeomorphic to minus 1 comma 1 open interval right so now let h from r to minus 1 comma 1 be a homeomorphism okay now then if we take the function composition that f with sorry so h with f if we take this function then this will be a function from a to where minus 1 comma 1 right now we can consider this function f so we can consider function f to minus 1 comma 1 again subset of minus 1 comma 1 closed interval right so then f is a continuous function from a to minus 1 comma 1 right so by the previous version so by the previous version we get a continuous function say g from x to minus 1 comma 1 such that g of a equal to f of a for all a belongs to a right now what is my capital f of a we know that f of a subset of minus 1 comma 1 now since f of a is subset of minus 1 comma 1 that imply g of a is actually subset of minus 1 comma 1 right for all a belongs to a fine now let d be the function g inverse minus 1 union g inverse singleton set 1 ok since that 1 and minus 1 are closed set in the set minus 1 comma 1 and g is a continuous function therefore d is closed d is closed where in x now also given that so given that a is closed in x right so a is a closed set in x and d is a closed set in x now from this so from this we can also say that a intersection d is empty why now since so image of a is just subset of minus 1 comma 1 and image of d under the set under the continuous function g is just we can say it is subset of set 1 comma minus 1 therefore we can say a intersection d should be empty now therefore a and d 
so therefore a and d are two disjoint closed sets in x right so we can use the euration lemma now by euration lemma So there exists a continuous function say phi from x to 0 1 such that say phi of a is singleton 1 and phi of d is singleton 0 right now again we define a continuous function psi x is just phi x into g of x. So why psi is continuous? Because phi is continuous, g is continuous and psi is the product of these two functions. Now you can just note that so since phi and g are continuous on x so psi is continuous on x now we claim that that function psi is a continuous extension of the function f that is we claim that psi of a equal to f of a for all a belongs to a. So why this is true? Because for each a belongs to a, what is my psi a? So psi a equal to just by definition it is phi a and g of a. Now what is phi a? So we know phi gives the value only 1 right on the set a therefore it is 1 and we know g a equal to f a because g is a continuous extension of f so it is just f of a so f of a right now what is the codomain of psi now we claim image of psi a subset of minus 1 comma 1. First of all note that so phi is a function from x to 0 1 right so that imply just say mod of phi x less than equal to 1 for all x belongs to x right now we claim that mod of psi x is strictly less than 1. Why? Because so now choose a point x in capital X. That is the whole set. Now we have two possibilities, right? Either x belongs to D or x belongs to D complement. Now if, if the first case arises, that is if x belongs to D, that imply what is my phi x now phi x just 0 right by the construction now what will be my psi x so psi x will be my phi x into g x just 0 right now what if if my x belongs to d complement now if x belongs to d complement that imply we have already that phi of x is less than equal to 1 and mod of gx is strictly less than 1. Why mod of gx is strictly less than 1? Because as my d is the set of g inverse 1 comma minus 1. That's mean see what is the image of d image of the set image of the continuous function g that is the set minus 1 comma 1 
right that closed interval minus 1 comma 1 but what is my d d is just g inverse 1 comma minus 1 that's mean if x is not in d then image of x cannot be 1 or minus 1 so what is the only possibility so only possibility is gx is lies between 1 minus 1 and 1 that is open interval minus 1 comma 1 right now then mod of psi x which is just mod of phi x into mod of gx now that is less than equal to mod of gx strictly less than 1 right now that imply psi is a function from x to minus 1 comma 1 is a continuous function such that psi of a equal to my f of a for all a belongs to a that's mean psi is a continuous extension of the function capital F right now what is my f f is a function from x to minus 1 comma 1 that was my f right so that was my f right and here i had that h inverse from this to r right so we have chosen my h is a homeomorphism from r to minus 1 comma 1 so here it is h inverse and also what is my psi so here x to minus 1 comma 1 so that is my psi and that is my h inverse right now since psi is a continuous extension of f that imply continuous extension of f therefore h inverse psi is an continuous extension of h inverse f now what is my h inverse f so we know h inverse we know my f is h compose f right so that is just f now let g equal to that function that is h inverse compose psi which is a function from x to r so therefore then g x to r is a continuous extension of the function f a to r okay so this completes the proof so we are done so i stop here